boys and girls, welcome to Sand and Sea Storytime. I'm so glad you could join me this summer for Storytime. Let's sing our welcome song. You help me. Are you ready? Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. I'm so glad to have you here, and I hope you can join me here at Virtual Storytime every other week throughout the whole summer. And on the weeks when we're not here that you can watch us online, you can come to the library and have story time with me at the library. So I hope that you can do that. You can stop in and pick up a schedule that'll tell you everything that's happening at the library this summer. There's fun things you'll want to be a part of. Well. Today, I have got a really fun story for you about an octopus. And this story is based on a true story about an octopus. Do you know what an octopus is? He's got eight long arms. Here's a picture of one. There's different kinds, but here's one of them, you see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then there's one hiding back there. He's got eight arms, and he's really, floppy. He doesn't have a lot of bones in him. So he can move around and squeeze around different places that other fish can't get to. So this book is called The Octopus Escapes. It's by Miley Malloy and the pictures are by Felicita Sala. Here is The Octopus Escapes. The octopus was happy in his cave. He watched the world go by outside. Bright fish darted by, some in schools and some alone. He could see starfish from his door and shiny mussels. Sometimes waves came rolling in, little shivery ones or big tumbling ones. The waves left sand on his floor so he swept it away. Sometimes crabs came in. He liked to chase them for dinner. One day, something new came into his cave. He wrestled with it and pulled it free. It was empty, so he climbed inside to hide. But that was a mistake. Then he was in a glass house that wasn't a cave. The glass house was in a big room where a human peered in on him. Behind her, there were sad gray sharks and slow sea stars in glass houses of their own. The human said he's shy and gave him tests that looked like toys. Sometimes the tests were hard and he felt smart, but sometimes they were easy. The human taught him to take pictures of the people who came to see him. People love to be in pictures. They made funny faces. But every day was the same in the glass house. The food came at the same time. It always tasted the same and he didn't have to chase it. There were no waves, no little shivery ones, no big tumbling ones. He missed the different fish swimming by his cave and the starfish and the shiny mussels. He missed warm spots in the cold water and cold spots in the warm water. He hadn't known how nice that was until it was gone. He tried to tell the human that he was bored. He tried to show her how small the tank was, but she only laughed and peeled his tentacles off her, her arm, one by one, by one, by one, by one, by one, by one, by one. That was when he knew he had to go. He waited for the night to come the same old dinner plopped into the same still water. 
The sleepy sharks cruised back and forth and the slow sea stars dozed. The lights went out and it was time. He took one more picture so they wouldn't worry. Then he slid down the glass and across the floor. He made himself flat and squeezed beneath the door. Outside, the pier was noisy and bright, but the smell of the salt ocean was close by. He reached way, way down until he felt the spray and dropped. He changed colors three times in the water just because he could. It was a long swim back to his cave. The ocean was warm and cold and shivery and tumbling. He had to dive away from boats and he got very hungry. But the thought of the same food plopping into the tank and the same unchanging water and the four glass walls he couldn't swim through. And he kept on until he saw starfish and mussels he knew. At last, he found his cave. He chased a crab and brought it home for dinner. But there was sand on his floor and there were fish sleeping in his bed. He swept them out, out. He made his cave just right. No one gave him tests and wanted a picture taken. He was home and he could do what he wanted. And so he settled in to watch the world swim by. The end. Did you know that octopuses can do all those things? My goodness. Here's, here's a couple other pictures of octopuses I found in one of my books. Here's one. A great big dark, he's a darker color. He's called a giant Pacific octopus. And it says that he can get in through a space in as small of an opening as a pop can. Because there aren't very many bones. There's only a bone around his jaw a little bit and somewhere inside that pokes all the muscles together. And here's another one when he's kind of, this octopus is kind of stretched out swimming. So you can kind of see his long tails there. So they all different kinds of octopuses. And let's see, if you would like to make an octopus, then you need to come into the library and pick up a take and make bag. They're all ready for you for June. This has all the crafts in it for our sea, sand and sea story times online. And you can even color the bag with your crayons or markers. And inside that bag for today's story time, you'll find a paper octopus that you can make. Now, you can even make yours with longer legs than this. I gave you enough strips of paper that you can make his legs about twice this long. And you can mix up the colors however you want and make his face however you want. It'll take a while to get his legs really long. So, but you can do some now and some another day and tell you have his legs as long as you want them. And be sure to give him a name. Well, that's the octopus. Well, I have another story for you today that does not have an octopus in it, but it's such a good story that I thought I just had to read it to you today. And it's called Sea Creatures from the Sky, and it's by Ricardo Cortez. And here we go for the Sea Creatures from the Sky. This is a tale of no one believing something that is entirely true. Has that ever happened to you? Not a fib, not a fable, not a stretch of reality. This really, really, really happened to me. There is a strange beast 
that lives in the air. That's the story I'm here to share. It came from above the sea, above me. Don't be absurd, it was no bird. There's something else and that's no lie. It stole me from the ocean and took me to the sky. The first time I saw it, it rumbled by without saying hello or even hi. Maybe it was shy. The second time it stopped and I thought, now we shall meet. But then I saw a fresh little fish to eat. One bite, that's all it took for this little fish had a hook. I should warn you about the next page because if you look, you might scream. Are you ready? I saw the two scariest creatures I'd ever seen. They measured, they probed, they spoke in strange code. Do you believe me so far? Because you would be alone. I knew no one would buy this story when I got home. Everyone I told, from the whale to anchovies, scoffed at the tale as completely impossible. In ships they steered, faces with beards, heads with two ears, it was all just too weird. So I sulked and swam and I did not speak. I felt like my tail made me a freak. And then after some time, maybe two weeks, I came to accept that life is unique. I know what I saw with my very own eye. Creatures in the sky. The end. Would you like to pretend to be an octopus with me? I have a rhyme here to do, and you can help me with the motions. You just do what I do, okay? Are you ready? It's called, I'm a little octopus. Arm one goes swish, swish, swish. Arm two helps me catch fish. Arm three pets my head. Arm four makes sure I'm fed. Arm five swims me to the shore. <clears throat> Arm six touches the ocean floor. Arm seven can grab and tug. But all eight arms give me a big hug. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that one. We will be back in a couple of weeks with another story time. So I hope you enjoy watching this and I hope you can come to the library and enjoy me for some of the fun here this summer too. Let's sing our goodbye song. Goodbye friends, goodbye friends, goodbye friends, it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye friends, goodbye friends, goodbye friends, it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye,